Hey, Arnold. So, you want to be like Doctor Strange? It ain't gonna work, buddy. Okay, yeah, so sometimes even I make mistakes. But seriously, dude, don't go in there. No, Arnold, stop! Congratulations, Arnold. You're now in the Dashti Loot Desert in Iran. This is the hottest place on the planet. If I were you, I'd start conserving liquids. There are three million sweat glands in the human body, so you're gonna lose up to three liters of fluid per hour. And all the salts in your body are gonna get taken out of the liquids, and this is gonna cause spasms in your limbs. Arnold, don't jump in there! It's just a mirage. Hmm, I guess sometimes there really is some benefit to your stupidity. Okay, so now you're gonna get cold. Let's find out where you are. This ain't the best situation, buddy. You're in the village of Oymyakan, Yakutia. This is the coldest place on Earth. A temperature of minus 71.2 degrees Celsius was recorded here. Yikes! According to statistics, 140 people a year here die from hypothermia. Come on, get moving! The human body temperature is 36.6 degrees Celsius, but in cold like this, it'll drop. And how? Your body's gonna try to warm up, and it does this by shivering. Then your memory will start to go. And next, your mind. Although, for you, Arnold, that's pretty much your normal state. This will be followed by a full sense of warmth. Arnie, buddy, you really need to start stamping your feet or death is gonna get you. Come on, Arnold, you can do it. Great job, buddy. Where did he go? And here you are. Okay, I won't wake you up. You really have been through a little too much. Sweet dreams, buddy. Arnold! Arnold! Wake up! I have a surprise for you. Of course, you know I'm your ally in battling your social phobia. I've decided to help you by moving you further away from people, specifically to the top of Mount Everest. The mountain's other name is Chomolungma, and it's the highest point on planet Earth. By the way, just saying, but you owe me $50,000. This is the average price for an expedition up here. To survive at the top, you need top-level equipment. After all, there's very little oxygen, and it's extremely cold. Go down, quickly, at least a kilometer. Hurry up, Arnold, but move as slowly as possible. Oxygen is only one-third the normal here. Try to save your energy. Lack of air causes the brain to misperceive time. Crawling five meters in three hours sounds a little too slow to me. Fortunately, the wind at the top reaches 200 meters per second, and it can help us. You can fly eight kilometers in just three minutes. But be careful, the ledges may get in your way. Lucky you, you fell into the trash. Everest tourists leave so much garbage on the mountain that the government pays $2 for every kilogram of garbage collected. I see you're trying to pay me my $50,000 back. Arnold, try not to breathe so much. At a temperature of minus 60 degrees Celsius, your lungs will begin to dry out. Mountain coughs are so bad they can even break your ribs. I'm sorry, Arnold, but climbers can't remove corpses from Mount Everest. It's impossible. Moreover, corpses are used as height markers for mountain peaks. Well, Arnold, at least you found something useful to do. I see you're really happy to be here, buddy, especially after such fiercely cold conditions. Uh, I think perhaps you're enjoying it a little too much. Hello, Arnold. It looks like you started hallucinating from a lack of oxygen, and someone brought you to the campfire. I'm glad that you woke up, but there are still six kilometers ahead of us. Unfortunately, I don't think you have the strength left to reach home. But wait, Arnold, I have an idea. You can repeat the feat of Marco Sifredi. In 2001, he descended Mount Everest on a snowboard. I believe in you, Arnold. It's not a good morning, Arnold. Do you remember what day it is today? 
Well, of course, today is Apocalypse Day. A volcano has already erupted. Then next, we get a tsunami. And to top it off, we got a big ass meteor coming. The eruption of a supervolcano is an excellent example of a possible apocalypse that our ancestors already experienced. For example, the eruption of the Toba volcano 50,000 years ago reduced the human population to just 3,500. And it also brought closer the onset of an ice age. You seem so calm, Arnie. As if you already have a solution. Arnold, you're prepared. I'm so proud of you. A hot air balloon. Seriously? Wait, did you make it yourself? Yeah, looks like you did. Are you sure you really need all this stuff? Or did you just take the TV as ballast? Well, let's go. You're not the first to make a balloon with your own hands. Larry Walters attached weather balloons to a chair and launched himself into the sky, almost to five kilometers. The result of his flight was a $1,500 ticket, a record altitude for a flight on a cluster of balloons, and, of course, Darwin Award. Surviving the apocalypse at cloud level is a great option. You can't be touched by a tsunami or an earthquake. But look, there's a meteor. Due to friction, its temperature is now over 1,500 degrees Celsius. Real hot air balloons are made from fireproof fabric. Remind me, Arnold, what did you use? Oh, you think that's it? Behold, the rain of meteor debris! So, uh, Arnie, how long do you think it can keep going? The first non-stop around-the-world balloon trip was completed by Picard and Jones on March 1, 1999. They landed in Egypt after a flight of 41,000 kilometers, lasting almost 20 days. Global catastrophe! Don't touch the floor, Arnie! The temperature of lava can reach 1,200 degrees Celsius. You can move around using any items you see. But remember, the chair will burn up in just three seconds, your bed will disappear in five, and your TV will melt faster than a single TV commercial. Come up onto the roof. Hey, don't fall off. If you fall into the lava, you'll get a serious burn that'll destroy all your nerve endings and boil your subcutaneous fat. But on the bright side, this does mean you won't even have time to feel how the lava burns you all the way to the bone. Get it together, man. Oh no, you idiot! Metal constructions will always heat up the fastest, you dimwit. But take it easy. Even if you fall, you won't drown. Lava is not as liquid as it seems. Counterintuitively, its density is even higher than that of concrete. As for walking on lava, you simply need special asbestos boots just like geologists use. Wow, it's getting hot! At this temperature, all the water in the oceans will boil and turn into a ginormous pod of fish soup. It's time to save the world's last fish. But really, the worst thing is not the hot lava, but what happens when it cools down? As it loses temperature, lava creates acid clouds of steam and gas, and they contain teeny tiny glass particles that are dangerous to humans. But don't worry, soon the whole world will turn into the Hawaiian Islands, which were formed after volcanic eruptions. Ah, a dream come true, Arnie. Now you live in Hawaii. He's taking a vacation for the first time in 10 years, and he's gonna have fun. Sorry, but it seems like your vacation will have to be postponed. Elon Musk's spaceship has crashed. Another failure after the disastrous launch of the Cybertruck. He really wants to colonize Mars. Elon Musk has managed to dehydrate people and pack them into capsules. Look, it works like instant noodles. Just add water. On board, there were 67.5 billion capsules. So now, there will be 10 times as many dumbasses on Earth. But this isn't your problem. Although, actually, it probably is your problem as well now. With so many people, they can't all be provided with transport. 
It's faster to walk. Each person on the planet produces about 0.75 kilograms of garbage every day. So, more than 200 trillion tons of garbage per year. This is enough to completely fill about 99 Grand Canyons. Power plants are being built everywhere because 75 billion people consume about 125 billion kilowatts per day. This amount of electricity is enough to charge 8 trillion iPhones. But this also means emitting huge amounts of CO2 into the atmosphere. You don't need to be a genius to realize just how seriously this will affect the climate. Free space is in short supply. So here are your new roommates. Only men. Reproduction is strictly prohibited by law under penalty of death. This world definitely doesn't need any little Arnold Rugrats running around. Although you were unlucky with women anyway. By the way, you hungry? You want to eat something? All food is now synthetic and recycled. You just tasted a recycled toilet paper patty. I cooked it just for you, like pearls before swine. Anyway, you still have to spend the night in this corner. Due to the increase in CO2, all the glaciers have melted and flooded 35% of the land. Given the agricultural needs of people for food, less than 1% of land is left for housing. Now, only rich people can afford to sleep with their legs extended. Damn, Arnold, I envy such a shorty like you. Go sit and watch a movie on the internet on Slowfix. Oops, to enter, you need to take a number and stand in line. You are the 1,250th. Due to overpopulation, internet speeds have dropped by 99.5%. Look where you're going! 20-story cemeteries are only for millionaires. The rest of the population are buried on any free piece of land. Pack your bags! Elon Musk built an ark from ocean debris and said he'd move you to the underwater Las Vegas. Cities are now built 9,000 meters underwater, like Everest, but down instead of up. You can finally rest, Arnie. Imagine if a wave caught you not in the bathroom, but in the sea. The Black Sea is, in fact, also a large bathtub, just the size of 340,000 cubic miles. It would take about 243 million years to fill it up. The sudden movement of tectonic plates causes waves. The seabed rises several hundred meters, thereby creating the deadly tsunami waves. We're now located in Portugal. The highest waves in the world are formed here. It's like a cheetah, but in the world of waves, because its speed has already reached 60 miles per hour. One Hawaiian surfer caught a 79-foot wave here. For this, he got into the Guinness Book of Records. Have you ever heard of a killer wave? These are single waves around 80 to 100 feet high, which can't be seen even from a ship. They can appear suddenly and imperceptibly. Therefore, there's very little time to save a ship's crew. Killer waves can sink a ship in just one hit. Even Conor McGregor would envy such a knockout. The largest wave on record was formed in 1958 in the Lituya Bay in Alaska. The wave reached 100 feet in height and covered the mountains approaching the bay. As a result, all vegetation up to an altitude of 1,700 feet above sea level was destroyed. And this is the height of five and a half Statues of Liberty. On a shore, nature itself will hint at the approach of a tsunami. Animals feel the disaster coming and begin to rush somewhere in a hurry or behave strangely. Birds form flocks and fly away. If on land, get in a car. On a bike, run. Ask King Kong to give you a lift at the very least. It's advised to get to a height of 120 <gasps> feet above sea level. Arnold, you better get to the top floor of the Empire State Building. The skyscraper's height is 102 floors, or 922 feet. The elevator goes up at a speed of 700 feet per minute. So you definitely have time. Oh, well, that's also possible. Don't shout underwater, otherwise you'll choke. A complete day will now last a full year, as the Earth, at a speed of 29.78 kilometers a second, 
makes a full circle around the sun. Daytime, sunrise to sunset, will last for six months under the hot, burning sun, with the remaining six months being nighttime, with the chill dipping down to minus 55 degrees. With the Earth stopped, its centrifugal force will create high hills at the equator. Later, they'll disappear, leaving one solid ring continent at the equator, separating two gigantic oceans. But the worst thing that will happen will be due to the core of the Earth stopping spinning. After all, it's the large molten metal sphere, which, through rotation, generates the Earth's magnetic field. The magnetic field protects the planet from radiation, so from now on, being on the surface is deadly dangerous.